Welcome to our monthly Praying with the Icon of Our Mother Perpetual Help. My reflection today is entitled, Mary the Perfect Disciple. Please join now in singing our opening hymn, Oh With What Joy. Take a moment now to be still. Be attentive to your breathing. Breathe God in and out. Simply gaze with soft eyes on the icon. As I always tell you, to gaze is to fix attention, but in a relaxed manner. In a sense, you are relaxing into the picture or perhaps allowing the picture into your heart. So allow God into your heart through the icon. And like Mary, listen now to the word of God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus' mother and his brothers came to Jesus, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. Jesus said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. The Gospel of the Lord. In my last reflection on Mary last month, our mother, I mentioned how in Luke's gospel, Mary is the perfect disciple. To be a disciple is to follow, in our case, to follow Jesus. And Our Lady shows us. She is the perfect disciple for the simple reason that she listened to God's word and what she heard, she did. This is our calling in a nutshell. Listen and do. It all began with a teenage girl from Nazareth hearing God's invitation. Will you mother my son? Yes. But far more important than Mary's sheer yes was its background. Her yes did not stem from God telling her how it all play out. Mary said yes to God without knowing at all that her yes would involve. The angel simply told her, don't be afraid, Mary. A Protestant preacher, Frederick Beekner, phrased it well. She is not to be afraid at all that lies beyond her room. 
a lonely birth on a winter's night, a child she was never to understand and who never had time to give her much understanding, the death she was to witness lonelier and more terrible than the birth. Mary's yes was a yes to whatever God might ask like Abraham's calling to leave his country and his father's house and go where he knew not where, going because God said, go to the land that I will show you. Don't be afraid for one good reason. Always, wherever, God will be there. Don't be afraid for as St. Paul would declare decades later, we know that in everything, God works for good with those who love God. Such I have discovered has been my redemptress life. At 14 and a half, I had no crystal ball, no angel to reveal the 60 years ahead for me. For an adolescent teenager just beginning his call, it all sounded truly adventurous and a little scary. I could not have imagined that the three places where I studied and was formed during my 12-year journey to the priesthood would all close before I had been a priest for 12 years. Nor did I have any premonition that the church in which I had grown up would change so radically that the body of Christ would be torn by more factions than Paul found in Corinth, that the priesthood would have so different an image that priests would leave the priesthood by the thousands, that priests would be found guilty of pedophilia, that redemptorist confers would be torn within by changes in its own order and say that this was no longer the same congregation in which they had vowed poverty, chastity, and obedience, which all underlines a crucial element in the discipleship. To follow Jesus is to encounter change and cope with change. Mary's life changed radically as the years moved on, from quiet adolescence to an angel's visit, from the birth of God's son in a stable to the home of a carpenter, from a cross on a hill to an empty tomb, from life without him on earth to life forever with him in heaven. Of course, there's no instant remedy for coping with change. Change in the church, change in the redemptorist, change in marriage, change in the workforce. Like Mary, we must listen at times painfully to what God is saying. Not ordinarily by messages brought on the wings of angels, but more often by what God tells us through God's own word through the events of our history, in the silence of our hearts. It took me a long time to grasp what someone expressed so simply once. When a door closes in your life, God opens a window. Only through such turmoil did I begin to understand what God was trying to tell me about myself, about God. Only through dear friends who left the Redemptress was I compelled at one point to analyze my own vocation and come to a deeper insight into the challenges, both good and bad, that I have encountered by following in the footsteps of Jesus and St. Alphonsus. No angelic visitation for sure. Only with God's grace and Mary's inspiration to listen to the Lord have I found the courage to do what I hear the Lord telling me? Have there been failures? Of course. Shortcomings, sinfulness, stubbornness, deafness, blindness, more than you can imagine. I've experienced what it means to pick myself off the floor of my own humanity and stand like the tax collector in the temple, silently crying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And still always there, never taking a holiday, 
is the ultimate change. Last summer in Northeast Pennsylvania, where I first began my ministry, I stood at the graves of redemptorist confreres whom I live with and work with. And I pondered how, to borrow from the poet Dylan Thomas, I shall go into the good night, go gentle or rage against the dying of the light. To be honest, I am not that anxious to die. Why? Well, one reason among several is that I just love this life. I love people. I love being a redemptorist who desires to help in the building of the city of God. So what am I trying to say about Mary's experience as a disciple of Christ and mine, which always involves, as I have mentioned, constant change. It would be so easy for me simply to stress the obvious. Listen to the Lord and then do what you hear. But in our time, the obvious is of little help. Today, especially, it seems confusion reigns not only within our democracy, but in the world and in the church as well. As hard as we try to listen, we hear different voices different Catholics, different disciples, so many issues that tear at the church we love. However, I can say this. First, I have come to realize that there will always be divisions. If St. Paul found division in Corinth with believers announcing, I belong to Apollos, I belong to Peter, I belong to Christ, then we shouldn't be surprised at dissension in our own present age. Secondly, we must always hope for with God all things are possible. Who would have ever imagined that East and West Germany would unite or that South Africa would relinquish the chains of apartheid? I mean, such incredible achievements only cause me to think of what can happen when God intervenes. And God does intervene every day for Christ who died for our lives in, lives in us. Even in your darkest moments when you feel terribly weak, remember the words of the Lord to St. Paul who begged to be relieved of his special misery. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul's response, I am content with weakness, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Even when change in the church seems to make little sense to you, don't let it destroy the peace of Christ in you. Our hope must always be in the Lord. Finally, we must love the Eucharist. Remember Jesus' words, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. No life. It is in the celebration of the Eucharist that we remember, we reenact, we represent the most remarkable love in human history. And that love brings us together as nothing else can. Today, for me, this Eucharist is singularly what the word means, thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God for giving us God's love. Thanks to Our Lady for teaching us how to listen. Thanks for all those people in our lives who, like Mary, have listened to God's word and by their actions have shown us the face of Jesus. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us, 
Mother of mercy, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of divine grace, pray for us. Mother most pure, pray for us. Mother undefiled, pray for us. Admirable Pray for us. Holy Mary, intercede for us, we pray. Mother of our Savior, pray for us. Virgin most faithful, pray for us. Virgin most powerful. Virgin most merciful, pray for us. Mother of our Creator, pray for us. Mirror of justice, pray for us. Seat of wisdom, pray for us. Vessel of honor, pray for us. the covenant, pray for us, gate of heaven, pray for us, morning star, pray for us, help of Christians, pray for us, star of the sea, pray for us, health of the sick, pray for us, refuge of sin. Comfort for the suffering, pray for us. Holy Mary, intercede for us, we pray. Queen of heaven, pray for us. Queen of martyrs, pray for us. Of apostles, queen of confessors, queen of prophets, queen of the saints, queen of peace. Thank you for joining us in praying with the icon of our Mother Perpetual Help. So please join us next month on Saturday, December 17th. The Lord be with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, our Mother Perpetual Help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help or sought your intercession was left unaided, inspired by this confidence. I fly to you. O Virgin of virgins, my mother, to you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O my
Father.